Hi, um, I'm back again with part two of my continuing series in learning uh, to become a Google Certified Educator Level 2. This is the second part, which is about learning models and how they personalize learning. Um, we're supposed to focus on drawing sheets, forms, and docs in this segment. Um, forms is mentioned a lot, docs and sheets are somewhat, drawings is barely ever mentioned in the actual learning in the Google Educator Center, so if you're unfamiliar with drawings, you may want to search that up. But this was a very quick um, unit that really focused on the importance of personalized learning. There are three main alternative education models um, as opposed to the classic direct instruction model. The first one is project-based learning, which starts with a driving question, forming that really good question, and then having students create further questions to research that question, answer that question, and then demonstrate their learning in some way. Um, it encourages connections, real-world connections, collaboration, um, and is probably the most emphasized um, alternative education model that I've heard of. Um, blended learning, it weaves together the classroom and online instruction, sometimes with adaptive uh, applications that adapt to the child's learning or the child's actual facility with the material. Blended learning is probably the thing that most classrooms have, some kind of combination of technology and direct assessment. The flipped classroom is literally the classroom inside out. Students receive instruction at home and then come into the classroom for further practice, extensions of their own learning, assessment. Um, this is probably very rare because we don't always have students that have access to materials at home, nor would they actually necessarily access them at home with fidelity. But all of these um, options are definitely thought by Google to be superior to the direct instructional model which can help answer a lot of the questions that you might have about this unit. Um, they all are supposed to result in more time in class for teachers to work with small groups that are individualized and personalized to the students' needs. Um, and it's supposed to be less reteaching to kids that already understand the concepts. Here are some examples of how to apply Google applications to personalized education models. And on the Google website, there are, there's audio and, tra and transcripts of different teachers saying how much, Google apps, uh, how much the Google apps have helped them to personalize education. So if you want to go in and listen to it, you can, but this is a quick summary. One teacher uses sites in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in the project-based learning classroom to create a website with embedded recordings of student reflections, student work, stuff like that. Um, a teacher uses Blogger in her blended classroom to create two column entries with a content in one column, a task in the other column, and it allows students to comment with questions any time of the day or night. A teacher uses Form to create uh, formative assessments on videos in his flipped classroom. You can always embed a video into a form. Um, another really good uh, thing you can use, you can use Edpuzzle if you're interested in that kind of thing. I know that's off topic, but it's a great, it's a great platform for getting kids to watch videos and comment at different parts of the video. Going back to topic, um, a teacher uses docs to create a multimedia tech set. And when I saw that term, I was like, I've never heard of multimedia tech sets. That's not a Google app, but it's a Google term. What is a multimedia tech set? It's a fancy term for creating a table and docs with material focusing on one topic that uses one column to link content and leaving a column open for the student to respond to that content. It could look like this. This is one I created just based on a book I had read recently, All American Boys, which has to do with a, racial, uh, a racially charged shooting with kids involved. So here I've got the title of what I'm having the kids link to, the NPR review of All American Boys, they could go to it. Here's a video from Fox, the Fox website regarding Trayvon Martin, um, where George Zimmerman is insulting his parents. I'm sure my students would get very angry about this. And this is an article by a youth group about identity and racial identity and how that makes us up, uh, how that makes our personalities and changes us. So I could have my kids look at two websites, watch a video, and give me their thoughts on everything. And if it was in Google Docs, I could even grade it. 
This was Google's example. You can do this in Sheets as well. So here you've got the text and media. You've got a YouTube video, a reading thing. Um, I don't even know what blend space is, but it looks interesting. This is a link to a text image. You could actually put in the image itself if you wanted to go insert image. And then here, the kids comment. They then go into a summary of even more ways to use apps. These are all bunches of ways to use apps. Again, sites for showcasing, docs and sheets for multimedia text sets, uh, Google Groups for discussions, Blogger for the blended classroom that was mentioned earlier, forms to collect data as to your students' formative learning and assessment, um, charts and spreadsheets to visualize all the data that you have regarding your students' learning, and slides as an individual or group alternative assessment. I've used slides before in my classroom as a great project, particularly for groups. What I took away from this unit was that the focus was on the personalized learning models. Google really wants you to buy into the idea that personalized learning models are the way to go. And this is trending in education, so they're right. Um, the learning models offer increased student access to materials beyond class time and hopefully encourage students to work independently in a way that direct instruction does not encourage. Additionally, the idea is that students will remain engaged in your, top, in your subject after they leave your classroom. So it's kind of all the time learning instead of learning for 45 minutes. And the apps featured here uh, the most were sites and the use of sheets and docs for multimedia text sets. So if you're unfamiliar with any of those, you may want to go and check that out. It was a pretty short unit, and I'm on to unit three.